Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here again this evening. Of course, it's February 28th, 2018. Still haven't left this day yet. i uh, got to thank our good friend Sister Rosa for sending me, uh, giving me a heads up on this article here. Uh, the Jerusalem Post, as well as World Israel News, is reporting leaked information from President Trump's Palestinian two-state peace plan uh, that is, as I've been saying from the beginning, is only echoing what the Vatican has wanted from the very outset there. Going to go into this a little bit, and you have to understand this is still alleged. It is a leaked plan. The White House is not liking what's coming out about this already, saying that it's still too early to be speaking about this publicly. But we're going to speak about it publicly because there's a very good reason. And tonight, I really ask my friends here, listen closely. We're going in depth. We're going to be talking about, again, like we did over the chemical attacks there in uh, Syria the other day. We went through all the information, giving you Aaron Erdem. We gave you the uh, Peace Corps members that did the investigation there in Syria. Now we're going to do the investigation tonight about this two-state solution. Gulio Meadi, Joel Bainerman, Barry Chamish, Tom uh, Horn, several different people involved that have clearly come out and it indicts many people in their guilt for dividing the land of Israel. I don't support the dividing of the land of Israel. I just do not. I believe it should be one state. There should be equality for the Palestinians as well, though. They should be Israeli citizens, and they should be able to live in peace together. All right, but let's get into it, because it's not what you think is coming down the pipe. Report says Trump plan includes Palestinian state with capital in East Jerusalem. Did I not say that? I said Trump might have said Jerusalem is Israel's capital, but he also stated in there that the Temple Mount will remain in status quo and the peace plan will actually determine who gets what. It only looked good, friends. It only looked good. I said he was parroting what the Vatican is parroting. All right. Now, the Jerusalem Post actually brings out more detail, so I'm going to switch over to the Jerusalem Post here. Report U.S. peace plan divides Jerusalem, keeps Israeli settlement blocks. They make it look like, wow, this is a great thing that the president is doing, but not so fast. Let's look at what it says. Palestinian Authority Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki said that the plan tilts toward Israel and is unacceptable to the Palestinians. In one way, yes. The fact that Prime Minister Netanyahu did not want to give up the Jordan Valley is one of those issues, and they're really calling foul over there in the Middle East. But let's look at what really is stated in the plan. Two days after the EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini warned the U.S. against taking false steps on the peace process, the pan-Arab Asharak al Awasat newspaper reported Wednesday that Trump's administration planned to jumpstart peace talks, calls for East Jerusalem as the capital of a demilitarized Palestinian state whose borders do not match the pre-1967 lines. Like I said, they're making it look like it's a good thing, but notice that East Jerusalem does go to the Palestinians. It's not over yet either, friends. According to the Saudi paper published in London, Arab states are unhappy with the framework and are trying to change it before it is presented. Under the plan, according to the report, the United States would recognize a Palestinian state and its capital in East Jerusalem on condition that the old city would come under international protection. The plan calls for the Jordan Valley and major settlement blocks to remain under Israeli sovereignty for small isolated settlements to be relocated. All right, guys, I need to blow this up. You need to see this. All right, because this is what's been, this is what's been going on now, and it's been a big sticking point. All right. Under the plan, according to the report, the United States would recognize a Palestinian state and its capital, East Jerusalem, on condition that the old city would 
come under international protection, a united nation force. We have been saying this for how long? Oh my gosh, you, let me show you some photos here, guys. Let me just bring up some reminders here. Whoop, nope, not that one there. This one here. All right. Remember this photo right here? The eco bridge that Israel built over the highway, highway coming up there, uh, highway one coming up from Ben Gurion Airport to Jerusalem. And how I told you, there, this will end up being used as a checkpoint. I know a lot of people thought that was funny. There's a lot of people that believe it too in Israel. Israelis, one Israeli been there for 40 years, said the same statement. Also, Simon Tov said the same statement. All right. Now it is called an eco bridge, and yes, they made the land mass go across it. So you really think that the Israelis and the um, United Nations, whoever helped them to build this, wherever they got the money from, all the millions of shekels to construct this, were building this so that the bunny rabbits could cross the road? Well, you know, I was coming to the airport as I reported to you guys one evening there, and lo and behold, uh, this was where a checkpoint was at like 4 a.m. in the morning. And it just so happens to be, if you look at the Google Maps, the new, where they dubbed, they did the pre-1967 borders, the Palestinian side goes wrapping right just south of, the, or actually that would be considered uh, west of this. And this is put like in a little tiny spot in between that, the West Bank, where the West Bank will cross Highway 1, and that of Jerusalem. And I told you, they're getting ready to internationalize the city. Now, I didn't just say it of my own. I look at the information that I see from Gulio Miotti, Barry Chamish, Joel Bannerman, uh, many other sources as I've watched this. And so I've watched for those signs. And also, Simon Tov talked about all the millions of shekels that was spent in infrastructure, rebuilding the roads, building in the train station, or the train uh, rail cars and stuff, and the highways being built to and from every direction to go to Jerusalem. Why? International city. All right. This has been going on for years now. And as we're going to bring up in a minute, Simon Tov brought this out. This happened after there was actually a two-state deal already signed. You're just looking at formalities is all, friends. So that's what they say. Palestinian state in its capital in East Jerusalem on condition that the old city would come under international protection. All right. Now watch what else it says. It is unfortunate that some parties are seeking to prejudice people against our unfinished plan whose these sources have not seen, said uh, Josh Raphael, a White House. Um, nobody should be uh, basing their reaction, public or private, on these reports. Well, let me tell you something, Josh. It's already been coming out for a long time. Raphael said the peace team would continue working on its real plan and encourage regional leaders to dismiss rumors in their, in their press. All right, so we'll, we'll give you credit. We'll give you benefit of the doubt. All right, allegedly you want the old city to come under UN protection or international protection. It says U.S. allies, including France, Britain, and Saudi Arabia, were, where the sourcing for this report allegedly originated have not been briefed on details of the plan and thus are not in a position to confirm or deny its contents with authority. However, some educated guesses on specific proposals may ultimately land closer to the truth than fiction, given that the contours of the conflict are so well known. This is a mix of possibilities and ideas, some which existed for decades, and senior White House officials said, we are going to continue working on the plan that is designed to benefit both Israelis and Palestinians, and will release it when it is done and in the time is right. But notice what he said, which has existed for decades. That's right, go back to the 1990s, maybe even further. Let me show you some of this information here. The Vatican wants the Temple Mount taken from the Jews. Giulio Miotti. This was uh, uh, published back in 2006. In 2000, speaking at a mosque in Palestinian held Ramallah, Yasser Arafat declared no one will succeed in removing us from our land, including Jerusalem, and the Palestinian flag will fly from the Temple Mount and from the churches in Jerusalem. 
Arafat could say that because he had won the Vatican support for his terroristic strategy. On June the 26, 2015, the Vatican signed its first treaty with the state of Palestine. It is the logical conclusion of a long path when the pontiff John Paul II ascended to the Temple Mount in 2000, Judaism's most holiest site. He wasn't welcomed by Israeli officials, but, but by representatives of the Palestinian Authority. And the holy complex was uh, bedecked in Arab flags. It was the Pope's implicit recognition of the Islamic hegemony. It was taken to mean that Islam and Christianity superseded Judaism and have the right to inherit its holy places. This is what Gulio Miotti wrote. There's more to the article. You'll be able to read it for yourself as we put it in there. All right. Now he has another article that just came out recently. This is uh, published here uh, two days ago. The shameful Western betrayal of the Kurds. Oh, I didn't really want to bring that one in at this time here. Uh, but Gulio does really slam the United States for not sticking up for the Kurds. That's actually meant for a different, uh, different news broadcast. All right, now, here's what I want to get into. This is an article from Barry Chamish on his website, uh, uh, renzi.com. And just to give you an idea who Barry Chamish is, Barry Chamish was Canadian born, but he was, uh, he uh, made Aliyah to Israel when he was young. Uh, he became an Israeli soldier. He fought in the Lebanon war. He was a journalist, uh, a renowned journalist. His best-selling book that really sent him into uh, stardom, so to speak, was Who Murdered Yitzhak Rabin? Uh, Barry has written for many different, um, many different news outlets and was also a friend of ours here at Israeli News Live. He had appeared here uh, a couple of times with us and always brought some very uh, provocative type of um, dialogue here with us on Israeli News Live. I always really appreciated Barry. He told me that, that uh, he would, they were trying to kill him because of the information that he was revealing about what was going on inside the government. So no, there are actually Israelis, not just Steve Benoon, that uh, expose things that are going on that I feel that are not uh, correct to be, to be done. Many journalists have done so, and of course, uh, even in the case of Joel Bannerman, who died at a very young age in his 50s there, uh, back in 2014. It says here, the children of Israel are about to become, this is what Barry wrote, the children of Israel are about to become the lepers of the world. It has all been planned from the beginning. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan announced just this before he added that he would be meeting Colin Powell in Spain. The CFR, UN, and Jesuit Vatican will meet in Madrid to add the final touches to the end game for Israel. You're talking about a journalist, recognized journalist, is talking about Colin Powell, Secretary General Kofi Annan, this was a few years back, their meeting right along with the Vatican in Madrid, Spain. They have been playing New World Order, good cop, bad cop with Israel, Bush and the U.S., of course, were the good cops, the UN and EU, the bad. But now Israel is going to discover they are all the same. All along, same aim, same anti-Semitic agenda, same new order. They just play different roles for a while. And once the horror of the streets of the West Bank tarnishes the Jews throughout this perverted planet, there will be no one to stop the New World Order forces. From arriving in the region to bring peace, they will dictate the terms to both sides and appear as wise as Solomon as they cut Israel with their scalpel, depriving the country of its water, capital, resources, and sovereignty. The best we can do is expose the New World Order uh, machine nations and hope enough people will wake up in time. I would bet the farm on it. Still, I received a timely and useful surprise. It seems that someone took the trouble to reread the newsletter I co-edited between 1992 and 96 inside Israel. That someone exerted numerous items from the newsletter and sent them streaming down the net. I received three copies in a day. After Netanyahu victory in 1996, I wrote that the new government must arrest then, try those who brought us 
the Oslo Accord and quoted some of the crimes listed below. Since then, the call to try the Oslo criminals has spread the length and breadth of Israel. Inside Israel did provide the evidence of betrayal and provided a glimpse of how the New World Order operates. Look at the dates beside the articles and note how much has become our pathetic reality since then. And now, much this obvious truth was ignored by the Jews we tried so hard to awaken. And unfortunately, much of Israel is still asleep. Barry, of course, died this past year. I'm sure he'll be greatly missed by many. I want to play with you, though, a little excerpt. I've played it before. This is Saman Tov. My wife, Yana Benoon, is interviewing him. And I want to play an excerpt for you from this interview again so you can see the inner workings that a two-state deal had already been signed. Listen closely. They didn't want to accept the offer, and they um, instead started the Intifada, which we know, you know that that happened. My husband was in the second Intifada, and he almost died in suicide attack. So, uh, but you have a different story than, than Yehuda Glick. He's saying that there's no more two states. Israel is one state. But you, you told my husband before that they have signed a two-state solution. Do you think, how did that happen? I want to hear briefly about that again. But do you think that there is some kind of secret deal that it's not being put up to public and there is some kind of secret deal going on uh, and something is plotting? against the Jewish people? Definitely. You know, several years ago, and I can't remember the exact year, <clears throat> I was in a Bible study here in Jerusalem with several people, and, and something unique happened during that Bible study. They received a phone call, and they never answered the phone. <clears throat> and I was surprised when the wife of the family got up and went and answered the phone. She also happened to be a lieutenant in the police. Mm -hmm. And she gets, she's talking to this person and she goes off into another room. And a few minutes later comes back and asks us to pray for this woman that she just talked to, who was very much in distress. And she had been invited into a, the boardroom in the Knesset. Ariel Sharon and a number of high, high, high-level dignitaries from many nations were there and they reviewed maps of a future Palestinian state, the total surrender of the city of Jerusalem, and it was agreed upon. It was, I believe, it was agreed upon prior to. This was a formality. Mm -hmm. So on the surface, the truth is that some of these people that were here in the nation were worthy of, of being noted, noted, but the media were not aware of these people being here. We're talking leaders of nations were here, and they left. And in the public, what was heard? Next to nothing. Mm -hmm. But what some, something definitely began to happen. Israel began to spend billions of shekels building roads, border crossings, and various kinds of walls, for what? These are in areas that have never seen conflict. And this is the point that we were looking at making ourselves there, as I was sharing with you a moment ago about the photographs here, of uh, the different things that were happening inside of Israel since the signing of this secret deal. Uh, and this is some of the images that I've taken myself uh, there in Israel of the different constructions. Many of these have actually even been completed since uh, I actually photographed these. And so it's very troubling what we see that's going on here. Now, it doesn't end there. Let me share with you some more interesting things as well. We showed you Barry Chamish. We see, showed you Guli Miati. This is Joel Bainerman. You can see his picture right here. Uh, Joel died in uh, 2014, and uh, under s mysterious circumstances, Barry Chamish believed that he was murdered, and he wrote, uh, and it, he's quoted here on the trumpet, the trumpet wrote an article, the Vatican Hidden Jerusalem Agenda, 
in 2009 of July. Let me read to you a little bit about this here. This will kind of give you a little insight of what Joel Bainerman says as well. Says, uh, as we watch this leading, uh, excuse me, uh, this magazine has been watching Joseph Ratzinger for a long time as we have watched, we have followed his course from chief confidant of the late Pope John Paul II to his enthronement as Pope and then on throughout the past four years of a controversial papacy. As we have watched this leading religious figure, we have monitored his involvement in clandestine project of the Vatican that was documented in the Bible prophecy almost 2,000 years ago, which remained a mystery until fully exposed within the last two decades. Now, in light of Benedict XVI's visit to Israel in May, his first since being elected Pope, it is crucial that the Vatican agenda for the city of Jerusalem be publicized. Back in the mid-90s, 1990s, a statement made by Pope John Paul II during an interview in his native Poland, broadcast in Italian over Polish radio, was noted by one of our Italian associates. She sent us a transcript of the interview, which included one particularly startling reference by the Pope regarding the Vatican's ultimate goal of transferring its headquarters from Rome to Jerusalem. What was unusual about this admission of John Paul II was the Vatican's intention to possess Jerusalem are seldom publicized and little commented on. In fact, in an era of secrecy, something that the Vatican has a history of creating over various of its affairs over the centuries, has surrounded this project since the failure of the Crusades, the most obvious of the overt, now very historical attempts by the Vatican to seize control of the Holy City. Those attempts have a long history with strong attachments to the German nation, right up to the past two world wars beyond to our present day. As far back as the 8th century, emissaries were sent to Jerusalem by Emperor Charlemagne and negotiated an agreement with the Muslim uh, Caliph Harun al-Rashid. The result was Jerusalem became a protectorate of the Holy Roman Empire. Historical records indicate that such protectorate was limited to oversight of the welfare of Christians, the care and protection designated the holy sites, and properties of the Roman Catholic Church in Jerusalem. The fact that the caliph would be a financial beneficiary to this enterprise was a given. Muslim support of the Kaiser army in World War I and again in the Nazi regime in World War II was in result of a long historical nexus between the Muslims and the German and in Germany. All right, now skipping down a little bit about the historical part, and I don't don't forget about the part about the, the, the close relationship between Germany and the Vatican because something's happening that a lot of people are not aware of. It goes into the next section, link with Germany. Recently, courtesy of the action of Germany's Vice Chancellor, Foreign Minister Frank Walt Steinmeier, Steinmeier, Germany was aggressively stepped up its diplomacy in the Middle East. Remember when we reported here on Israeli News Live how that the Germans moved all of their aircraft down to the country of Jordan, claiming they needed to do this because of bad relations with the Turks? Remember, Erdogan is just playing bad guy, good guy as well. He knows what's going on. He said East Jerusalem was the capital of the Palestinians as well. He's playing along with the Vatican. Don't think he's not. And of course, he just met with the Pope recently. The Vatican ha already has a significant presence in Jerusalem under Israeli law. Rome has legal jurisdiction over free access to its holy sites, including both its institutions and assets in Jerusalem. The consolidation of these arrangements came in a bilateral agreement termed the Fundamental Agreement between the Holy See and the State of Israel, which the Israeli government signed with the Vatican on December 30, 1993. The terms of this agreement, composed in a secret, were subsequently legislated by the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. What remains largely unknown in the secret made by current Israeli president, which by the way, he's no longer current, Shimon Peres and the leftist peacenik and former Mer uh, Meretz party member of Yossi Balin, known widely as the Perez Poodle. On June 15, 1994, six months after the signing of the bilateral agreement with the Vatican, the Israeli government inked 
Another agreement with the Vatican endorsing the Roman Catholic Church participation in negotiations to determine the future of Jerusalem. What do you know? They get to decide the, the future of Jerusalem. No different than Pope Pius XII back in 1945 when he met then foreign minister, even though there was not even a state yet, Moshe Sharit, who became the second prime minister of Israel, was foreign minister at the time, met with Pope Pius XII, and he said to him, make sure, there's no documentation to, to validate this, but it has been told over the centuries, or over the years now, the decades now, that he had made an agreement with the Pope to make sure the name would be called for the state of Israel would be Israel and not the Jewish state that Ben-Gurion wanted. And that also that there would be a guaranteed statute was, which, which was put in Resolution 181 making Jerusalem, an international city governed by a UN force as Shimon Peres also did in the 1993 secret meetings with the Vatican. This, now it goes on to read, this was followed in February 1996 by Secretary General of the Vatican, Sergei Sebastian, announcing that Rome recognizes the Palestinian sovereignty over East Jerusalem. The Vatican had thus revealed its hand. Four years later, the Palestinian terrorist Yasser Arafat met in an audience with Pope John Paul II at the Vatican. The two signed an accord normalizing relationships between the Palestinians and the Roman Catholic Church and agreeing to work toward establishing Jerusalem as an international city based on international guarantees. Later that year, the Pope visited Israel declaring that Jerusalem was the main obstacle to peace in the region. He publicly called for international sovereignty of the holy city to safeguard its sacred sites. You remember when I told you about how that um, Jean-Louis Touran, who is a Vatican spokesman over Jerusalem, he made this statement, it was published on Israel National News, there will be no peace until the question of Jerusalem and the hegemony over these sites are answered significantly. And of course, I shared with you the prophecy that this was fulfilling in biblical prophecy over in the book of Ezekiel, where God said that let me, let's just pull it up. We need to bring this up because this is more of an in-depth look of what we're talking about here, and I don't want to pass this by because this prophecy I've not spoke about in a while, but it is very important that's been fulfilled in modern times. The third antiphata, in fact, shows it. All right. Verse 10. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 35. Because thou hast said, these two nations... And these two countries shall be mine. We will possess it whereas the Lord was there. Now that's a statement that the Vatican is quoting under Pope John Paul II now. They call it whereas the Lord was there. And then when it talks about these two countries, these two nations, it's talking about the Palestinians, the West Bank, and Israel. And the Vatican is going to claim them from themselves. Watch what it says. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will do according to thine anger and according to thine envy which thou hast used out of the, thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I shall judge thee. Now the them puts it between the two nations. Maybe there's some truth to Palestinians being uh, descendants, not so much of the Jews, but of the house of Israel. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to devour. And you have magnified yourself against me with your mouth and multiplied your words against me, and I have heard it. Thus saith the Lord, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Now, that's actually the verse before that I meant to read as well. Maybe one before, here we go. And I'll fill it. Verse 11. I think it's verse 6. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee into blood and shall pursue thee. Surely thou hast hated thine... No, that's not it either. Hang on. Uh, oh, here it is. Verse 5 is where it is. I should have started at verse 5. But anyway, we've already done the other verses, so that's good enough. Verse 5 is the prophecy I was looking for. Because thou hast, ha hast had a hatred of old and hast hurled the children of Israel into the power of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time of the iniquity of the end hurled them to the power of the sword. When they started the third intifada, isn't it interesting that most of the Jews that were killed were killed by a knife, a sword. 
And that was at the time that their iniquity would have an end. The power of the sword, the time of their calamity, which was 70 AD, and the time that their iniquity would have an end. And it clearly indicts the Vatican for those crimes. So going back, we see in here, but as a party, it goes in here, we, actually I was going to actually move further down. We won't go into all the parts there. You can read that. Here it is. This is what I wanted to get to right here. Journalist Joel Bainerman, a well-known commentator on Israeli affairs, wrote, The end goal of the Vatican is to seize control of, this, of the old city of Jerusalem out of the clutches of the state of Israel. To that end, they have a secret agreement with Israel which ob obliges Israel to respect the extra territorial claim to their physical presence in the city. In short, we have accepted the Vatican's right to have little Vatican sovereign embassies through our eternal capital of Jerusalem. That same Vatican has committed itself in public and in written agreement to ensure the Palestinians have sovereignty in the old city of Jerusalem. That's so that they can get control. And the only way to do it is with a united nations force there. All right, now, we're talking about how the Germans... And the Vatican have been working together. Israeli News Live was in Bratislava uh, about two years ago covering the foreign minister's conference there. And that foreign minister's conference was talking about creating a EU army. No longer the need for NATO, but a European Union army. Now that I've seen what the trumpet has brought out here, and this close relationship between Germany and the Vatican and how they're rebuilding those ties once again, it makes more sense why the EU army. Now, a good friend of mine, Renze, he sent this to me. It's in uh, uh, the Dutch, uh, it's, a, it's a Dutch, uh, uh, the Ministry of Defense for uh, the Dutch land there. And... I believe that's the Netherlands. I get my brain to work here in just a second here. And in the uh, language here, I'll just hit the translate for us. It says units, uh, unit of the 43rd Mechani uh, excuse me, Mechbrick practice with their German counterparts in preparation for participation in the very high readiness joint task force, also called the flash power in 2019. We are together. And what, Renze was saying to me when he wrote to me in English because he speaks the German language is that the Germans will be spearheading this rapid response European military force to deal with the threat of Russia. But they're bringing together other European members as part of that army all under Germany. The rise of Nazism or fascism, whichever way you want to call it, is on the rise once again. This is what we're seeing in Ukraine, why we see the Nazi symbols uh, appearing, the SWA stickers, the SS on the shoulders, which is an identifying marker, the loyal to the Holy See as being their supreme overseer. Very troubling, the things that we're seeing coming out right now. Petros Romanus. Uh, excuse me, the book that was written by Tom Horn and uh, uh, I forget the other gentleman's name that wrote this, they had put in here as well, they had tried to track down what Barry Chamish wrote about, which it was just not just Barry, but it was Joel Bannerman as well, uh, in 1993, where he speaks about the newspaper La Stampa talking about that secret deal that the Vatican had made with Shimon Perez that would give up the sovereignty of Jerusalem. He says, we took pains to fact check Chamish's claims and to the extent that we were able, they checked out below his original article, which ran in the Italian paper La Stampa. And I know Barry, Barry was definitely a man that did not play around when it come to that information. I want to see if I can get that uh, newspaper up here for you a little bit bigger. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna work with this here. But anyway, they actually show the newspaper on there, of course, Shimon Prez with uh, Pope Benedict XVI, and of course later with Pope Francis, we know he was with him. Uh, but that is the newspaper there that the article appeared in. I've talked about it many times myself on here. Uh, but Tom Horn and Chris Putnam uh, did an outstanding job in exposing this. And uh, kind of can't help but wonder what happened to that young man that was uh, a partner in writing this. 
Uh, he seemed to have an untimely death, as many of these others in here, Barry Chamish, Joel Bainerman, Guglielmiotti thus far is still on the scene and pounding it hard. But uh, friends, there's some serious threats out there. And I've had my life threatened several times over the years for the things that we stand for here. But we're standing for truth. And even this whole issue that's happening in the Middle East, believe me, I don't want to be the guy that bears bad news. But I love my people in Israel. Someone's got to tell them the truth. Because not many people are willing to. They would rather just feed us to the wars and watch the Israelis die as a result. God will stand for us. Don't, don't kid yourself. He's going to come on the scene. But he also says in prophecy that we will be in a great travail when he does. And you don't go into a travail unless you're really under heavy persecution or a defeat. Even when people talk about Psalm 83 being a war, the Psalm 83 was a conspiracy before the war. But Israel is crying out, Be thou not silent, O God. Hold not thy peace while thy enemy is making this uproar. Look all around Israel. Is there not an uproar going on? You know, and with the uproar all around the borders of Israel, the psalmist David wrote it was the enemies of Israel. Now President Trump, you know, I knew that President Trump, I don't care, you know, as much good as President Trump has tried to do, I knew good and well when I watched the way he worded it. Everybody was cheering him on. He's recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. But you know what? All you have to do is listen to the verbiage he uses in there. He says Jerusalem, but then he cuts it short. No Temple Mount. And they'll have to decide this together. He was only parroting what Rome once parroted. By the way, one more thing I'll just say. Joel Bainerman was the first one to ever reveal that the Clintons were pushing cocaine sales. That's another thing about Joel Bainerman. These were very good investigative journalists, but they exposed a lot of things that made a lot of people hate them. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for being a part of this ministry and helping us to stay on the air. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org.